What are flying monkeys? Are you one or are you susceptible to being one? Let's talk about that today. A flying monkey is a popular psychology term that refers to an enabler of a highly narcissistic person or someone with full-blown narcissistic personality disorder. A flying monkey is an agent who acts on their behalf. Like the term gaslighting that I talked about a few weeks ago, the term flying monkeys also stems from an old Hollywood movie. Maybe you've heard of it. It's called The Wizard of Oz. In the movie, the flying monkeys are the malicious assistants or the deplorable minions of the Wicked Witch of the West. And their job was to terrorize Dorothy and her friends as they made their way toward Oz, the Emerald City. The flying monkeys did the dirty work the Wicked Witch of the West either couldn't or didn't want to do herself. Her ability to train and control the monkeys to be loyal and to do her bidding in hateful, malicious, and egregious ways is pretty scary. And the fact that the flying monkeys lacked the ability to think critically and restrain themselves from blindly doling out harm is even more terrifying when you think about it. And that's because the flying monkeys bought into the witch's propaganda against Dorothy and her friends without ever fact-checking or getting to know them enough to discern if the witch's propaganda was true or not. That's blind faith. And in this type of scenario, it's terrifying. I'm Jennifer Whitaker, trauma specialist, and I want to welcome you back to another video on my channel. And if this is your first time visiting, welcome. It's great to have you here. Please like, share, subscribe, and be sure to hit the bell because all of my videos interrelate and connect in some way or another, and I'd hate to see you miss something. So let's get back to the flying monkeys. In The Wizard of Oz, the Wicked Witch of the West represents a narcissistic personality style, and amassing a small personal army of flying monkeys is a common tactic that's used by narcissists to meet their goals. And the goals of a narcissist might be to look good, to save face, to come out on top and to protect their reputation. So think winning. Narcissists are masterful at manipulating people to see them the way they want to be seen, not the way they actually are. And this is why narcissists are often charismatic, charming, and they have magnetic personalities that make others see them as the life of the party, the one to listen to and the one to trust. They often act in one way in front of friends and colleagues and out in public. But if you're in a relationship and you go home alone with them, and when you're behind closed doors, that's when Jekyll becomes Hyde. And because friends, colleagues, and neighbors never seem to meet Hyde, they often don't believe the victim's claims or they don't take them seriously. The flying monkeys might ignore the victim's claims or even chastise the victim with hurtful words like, you're crazy or neurotic or you're being unreasonable. This, I don't believe you or I'm siding with him attitude really takes a toll on the victim. Flying monkey stories happen a lot in breakup and divorce cases. The narcissist will spread gossip and innuendo to anyone who knew both of them. That could be family members, mutual friends, neighbors, colleagues. And before you know it, they all start looking at the victim with suspicion in their eyes. They might think, why is she being so difficult? Why won't she give him a chance? Why is she making things awkward for everybody? And I have lived this. So let me tell you a little bit about my experience. Many years ago, when I was in the process of leaving a narcissistically abusive relationship, this flying monkey thing happened to me. My ex attempted to turn all of our mutual friends, neighbors, and even some of my own family members against me. I had already secured a place to live, and I was in a hurry to move out. And in my haste to move out, I asked for help from close family members. 
And how it turned out was an in-law came to help me move. And at his first opportunity, my ex cornered my in-law and told him that he didn't want me to leave. He didn't understand what was happening. He said that he begged me to stay and I was being unreasonable. He just couldn't talk any sense into me. And this pity party that my ex put on could have won him an Oscar. And he was convincing, so convincing that my in-law, even though he went ahead and helped me move, went home and expressed his doubts about my side of the story to other members of the family. And the light that was cast on me from this experience made me look neurotic and sensitive, unreasonable and demanding. And the doubt that some of my own family members expressed because of this was devastating. And from then on, when I shared anything about my experience, the response I got was, well, I just don't know. I just don't know. They didn't believe me. And the level of trust among us has never fully rebounded from that incident. And this is an example of how life shattering it can be when a narcissist recruits flying monkeys to do their bidding. Sometimes the relationships are irreparably damaged as a result of the narcissist's propaganda. So who are these flying monkeys? Flying monkeys are people who are targeted by the narcissist, sometimes directly and sometimes indirectly in order to do the dirty work of the narcissist. And the narcissist will taint the perceptions of the people closest to the victim. The narcissist can achieve his or her ultimate goal, which is to save face, to protect their reputation by destroying someone else's and ultimately to win or come out on top. So in saying what he said to my in-law, my ex was able to maintain his good guy image while at the same time making me look like the bad guy in the scenario. So by creating doubt in my in-law, he quite effectively recruited him to be one of his flying monkeys. And the gaslighted gaslighting started to come from those closest to me who now doubted my story. These are deeply destabilizing experiences for victims of narcissistic abuse. Victims are often left with no one that they can trust. And this drives them further and further into isolation, which is even more devastating. Narcissists train their flying monkeys using a number of common tactics. And one of these tactics is encouraging their flying monkeys to spy and gain intel on the victim. So for example, the flying monkeys might casually let the narcissist know things like who the, they saw the victim eating lunch with, or maybe if it, the flying monkey is a neighbor who lives on the same street, they're going to keep tabs on what cars are parked in the driveway or what times of day, you know, the victim is leaving and coming home. Gossip is another favorite tactic narcissists use with their flying monkeys. And one reason is narcissists know how powerful gossip can be. Knowing a secret can make a flying monkey feel special, like they're in the know about some juicy, dirty little secret. Narcissists will use gossip liberally in their family systems, social networks, and workplaces. And over time, the gossip will change. It often starts out from minor entertaining anecdotes, and it will progress over time to more egregious distortions of the truth. The gossip can easily turn into a smear campaign, which is another tactic that narcissists will use against their victims. Because the narcissist is so charming and charismatic and has this magnetic personality, the flying monkeys may not even realize that they've been recruited into a smear campaign against the victim. After all, they are falling prey to the same tactics that drew you and me in in the first place. Because people don't realize they've been groomed by the narcissist to be a flying monkey, they inadvertently become the enablers. They make excuses for the narcissist. And those excuses might sound like, 
oh, that's just how he is. She's all talk, but no walk. He doesn't really mean that. Boys will be boys. That's just locker room talk. And they will minimize the anything that could, could show the narcissist in a negative light. The smear campaign can then turn into a victim blaming campaign. Narcissists are masterful at making themselves the victim. And a common tactic to accomplish this is called DARVO. DARVO stands for deny, attack, or accuse, and reverse victim and offender. That's a topic for another video, so stay tuned. DARVO is a particularly insidious form of gaslighting. And as a result of such tactics, the narcissist is able to convince the flying monkeys that they're the victim. And then the flying monkeys turn around and blame the victim for victimizing the narcissist. It's really kind of a screwy mind game, if you think about it. And so this is what I explained earlier that happened to me. My ex managed to darvo my in-law into believing he was the victim of me by painting me as the unreasonable one, the insensitive one who wouldn't budge, even though he begged me so earnestly to stay, which never happened, by the way. That was a flat-out lie. For weeks leading up to my move, he gave me the silent treatment, and at one point even invited friends to our house for a party by the fire pit while I was inside packing. It was an ineffable experience for me, and I really can't adequately express into words how disorienting the whole experience was. So in situations like this, flying monkeys become an essential tool when it looks to the narcissist as if things are falling apart. It's really hard to see the tactics narcissists use unless you've experienced it yourself. And this is what makes a person so susceptible to becoming a flying monkey without consent, without awareness, or without knowledge that it's happening. It's easy to deny that which you have not experienced. So this is why it's important to believe victims. When unwitting people who have good intentions inadvertently become a flying monkey, the narcissist has achieved the goal of stripping any support the victim might need to help them get through. Narcissists also thrive on drama and chaos, and the flying monkeys do a really great job of stirring up the drama and chaos in such situations. And sometimes the narcissist will end up discarding the flying monkeys just like they discarded their victim. And this is when the flying monkeys might, and I say might, wake up to what's really happening. And some of them who wake up to what's really happening may apologetically reach out to the victim in an attempt to make amends. And after going through such hurt and betrayal, it's really up to the victim how to handle such a situation. So how do you make yourself flying monkey proof so you don't inadvertently or unwillingly become the flying monkey for a narcissist? Well, hopefully after learning what a flying monkey is and how they're exploited by the narcissist to do their bidding, hopefully you won't let that happen to you. But let me give you a few tips. Number one, when someone brings you gossip or tries to taint your perspective of someone that you both know, and maybe in your mind, you're thinking, I thought this was a pretty decent individual, but this is a very different light than how I see them. Go to that person and find out what's going on. Because you're not a kid. You're not on the playground in elementary school anymore. Hopefully you're a full grown adult. And if you're an adult and you have the capacity to reach out with kindness, curiosity, and compassion, do so. Find out what's really going on. And it can take some self-restraint from being sucked into the seductive world of gossip and gaslighting. So you do need to have a bit of self-restraint. Be aware when somebody is gossiping at you and avoid treating the victim with hostility and judgment 
and make sure that you double check, like fact check, get somebody else's side of the story, get more information and don't just blindly believe what one person tells you. Number two, another way to avoid becoming a flying monkey is to observe your own emotional reactions. Learn to notice when you're being affected by strong, short-term, and superficial emotions, because that can get us dragged into a situation really quickly. Learn to notice the red flags that you're being manipulated. And those red flags include things like dramatic, abstract, emotionally loaded, and cliche-filled stories about the victim. The more the narcissist can pull on your heartstrings, the more likely you'll be on their side. And the narcissist knows this. Number three, notice if the narcissist is spreading gossip um, or the narcissist who's spreading gossip, notice if there might be an addiction to anger. Because neurologically, anger is quite intoxicating and it can be addictive. And that's because it activates the reward centers in the brain into producing dopamine. So in other words, our physiology can actually a reward, reward us for feeling anger and rage. So it can actually feel motivating to stay in those emotions. So notice if your anger reward centers are often activated when you're around the person who's spreading gossip. And if so, that's a clue to dig deeper, to step back and to get a bigger perspective and don't just believe, blindly believe what you're being told. Number four, do you have a need to help or to serve others? Do you have a need to be good or do you have a need to fit in? Because narcissists will quickly figure this out and exploit those needs by giving you the impression they're fulfilling them for you in some capacity. So to avoid being recruited in this way, work on your own self-esteem issues and learn to trust your instincts again. Get back in touch with your gut. And the best way to avoid becoming a flying monkey is educating yourself enough to know the signs and symptoms of a narcissist and the signs and symptoms of a victim of narcissistic abuse. When you're educated about and understand the red flags and the warning signs, you are so much less likely to be manipulated by the narcissist's propaganda. I hope you found this information helpful. If you have, please like, like, subscribe, and share, and don't forget to hit the bell. I'll see you all next time, everyone. Happy self-discovery.